It is Ashley with Cool Cleveland here with Walter Patton, founder of Create Art, Not Violence. Thanks for chatting with me today, Walt. For sure. Got you. Um, I appreciate you taking the time out of your busy schedule because I do understand you're very busy. Tell us about Create Art, Not Violence, how it came about, what inspired it. Just being in the community daily, like just living in that community and just seeing the daily um struggles, like just seeing the traumas that we face every day. Um, you know, whether it's um from the from the homicides to child molestation. I, I get all this stuff on my door, you know what I'm saying? People knock on my door and tell me stuff. So um and then me working close with CDCs and different I partner with seven nonprofit organizations. So with me working close and actually being in these rooms and inside these meetings, I get a chance to speak for the people who may not ever get a chance to speak to the CDCs or the organization. So I'm kind of like the voice for them. And I started out in the barbershop, El Dorado's, which was on East 40th next to the Dave's that's closed. El Dorado's is closed too now, but I started out there just talking to residents in the central community all, of all ages. I was trying to bridge the gap between the two generations, like the elders and the youth. That's how it started in the barbershop. I would bring young guys in, Young women, I would bring older men and older women in, and we would try to connect the dots. And that's how it started, like just being a part of the daily struggle. That's awesome. So you use art to kind of give teens and youth an outlet, would you say? Yeah, so that's, so, so that's well, it's kind of the same thing. It's like um, ghetto therapy is the adult version of create art, not violence. Now, what you're talking about is create art, not violence, while I work with youth from like ages eight on up. And what they do is they use like various forms of art, like whether it's poetry, hip hop, arts and crafts or film to overcome their traumatic experiences. So they use so they put all the traumatic experiences inside of music, inside of hip hop, inside of film. They talk about lead, poison, infant mortality, food deserts, all that. So we yeah. So that's what we do with that. That's create art, not violence. And that's that's where you started off. Right. And then you yeah. branched out. So you mentioned <laughs> ghetto therapy. Um, Ghetto Therapy is every Wednesday at Clubhouse Essentials. Uh, yeah. Can you tell us more about that? Yeah, so this is actually my what? This is my fourth week. This is my fourth week at the Clubhouse Essentials. And um, the first week we was talking about issue 24, holding police accountable for, you know, homicides against anybody, but specifically young black men and women. That was that was week one. And um, week two was... um. I had a, a nurse practitioner, a therapist, and I had a, um, a grief specialist and an author come in and talk to the community about trauma and, and giving them resources on how to connect with them outside of ghetto therapy. So that was like, um, I think that was what, week two or week three. And, and then, no, yeah, that was week two. And then week three, we just had a, a Thanksgiving dinner. So nice. yeah, we just ate, we played TikTok with the kids, just, just a whole community vibe. That's awesome. I think that there is such a stigma in the Black community regarding therapy. Uh, I think a lot of times in, you know, in Black households is what goes on in my house stays in my house, which mm -hmm. prevents us sometimes from getting the help that we need. So I think for you to put the, you know, the twist on it by calling it ghetto therapy and making it a group setting, I think that it's amazing for the community to be able to come together and talk about traumas and talk about different issues because it helps when people know that they're not alone and that there are other people who can relate to what they're going through. Um, so I think that it's amazing. So the ghetto therapy sessions that you have coming up, so you have one tomorrow. And yes. what's that What's that one going to be about? So that's just a men's discussion where it's going to be a whole lot of fellas coming together because ghetto therapy been dominated by amazing women, which I respect and I love it. But now it's time for, for the men's to have a discussion and um, talk about, you know, the um the gap, like, like, cause we still have a huge gap with the generations, with the men and the young and the young guys. So we trying to still bridge that gap constantly talking about um the music inside of the community. And does that influence these young, these young guys um, decision-making? So we're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about, um, trauma without having your dad inside the household and does that make it worse for you or is that better which you know i think is worse but that's what it's going to be about tomorrow that's just some of the topics but it's really just an overall men's discussion that's awesome and uh so what is what's the location for the address for clubhouse essentials so it's east 55th 
2765, the same plaza as the Licenseboro Plaza on East 55th. So that's 2765 East 55th. That's awesome. And then what other programs do you have at Clubhouse Essentials? So I know they got a um like like a cardio session with um Yella, get fit Yella. They have a yoga session with Ebony. Um we have B Sisters and Mentorship program for young ladies. Um that's Cassandra. We have um, health and wellness. We have mommy and me. Mommy and me is actually a program that's ran by Alicia that's teaching like how to um, apply for like 501c3 LLC. It's just it's just an overall business class and that's ran by Alicia, mommy and me. Um, and then we have Ed with the Shalom Tranquility Gardener. So she's going to be teaching gardening inside of the um, you know the central community. So you know the importance of garden and that's and that's Ebony Joiner. So yeah, yeah. So that's that's really the only ones I could think of off the top. Well, that's I mean that's a, that's a lot. You said a lot. <laughs> that's amazing um, to have all those resources in you know the heart of the city of Cleveland. How can people follow up with what's going on at the clubhouse? So they have to follow um, for just overall clubhouse information. They'll follow um, feed the soul Clee. feed the soul Clee. Okay, and I'll make yeah. sure I tag that below. So that's for all the um, so that's for all the information on the clubhouse and all the and resources how, we provide. Okay, and how can they follow Create Art Not Violence? So you can follow Create Art Not Violence. Um, I have like three different pages, but to make it easy for you, you could just um look up Walter Patton underscore Walter Patton underscore, and then from there you can connect to my Free Thinkers since eighty seven page. And then you can connect to my Create Art Not Violence page from there as well. Okay, I'll make sure I tag all those as well. So I think I would be remiss if I did if we didn't chat a little bit about um, the late Mansfield Frazier, who was a longtime contributor to Cool Cleveland. Um, I know that, um, so he's my dad, of course, but you had the opportunity to meet him. What was that like? Yeah, I met him once. Um, I was doing this grocery store cooperative. We was trying to bring another grocery store in the central community. And I was on the board of a grocery store cooperative, which is um, residents having ownership inside of the grocery store. So I was on a board with a lady from the city of Cleveland named Kim Scott. And I was talking to her about not having any mentors. I'm the only one that do what I do inside of my community. So it's tough. I don't have anybody to talk to. I just got to figure things out. And she was like, well, there's a guy that used to live in the central community years ago. And his name is Mansfield Frazier. You should reach out to him. So I did it. I did exactly that. She gave me his phone number. She made sure it was okay to get his phone number. And he gave her the okay. And um, I gave him a call. I kind of procrastinated for a few days because I didn't really want to meet up with him at first. Like, I'm like, I don't really feel like talking to nobody. I don't want to hear no stories or none of that. Like, if you can't relate to me, you know. Right. Then going to prison, living in the projects, going through all these neighborhood fights and having a kid at 16. I was like, man, I ain't trying to hear nothing if, if, if they can't relate to that. Yeah. So there's something in my mind was like, just go, just go check them out. And then he ended up calling me like, are you still coming? And I was like, yeah, I'm gonna come. So I ended up coming and everything that I just named that I was going through was something that he went through years before me. And I found that like intriguing. It was, it was dope because he really was going through that stuff. Like, and he been through it before me, he even been through more stuff than me. So for him to let me know that he can relate to me on that level, was special and then he showed me around the rhino like the winery i didn't believe it was a winery on huff right. it was right there and it was amazing then he sat down he started showing me articles of him and oprah um he gave me his book he got a book then he introduced me to jeffrey canada he gave me a book of jeffrey canada i think it was like knife stick and gun or something like that and he was like well you know what you're doing for the kids in the community is cool it's needed but he like the only way you can really get to those kids is if you get to the parents. And that was the Jeffrey Canada model with the Harlem Children's Zone. And your father, he introduced me to that. So that 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 stick with me forever. It's like I'm constantly trying to reach the parents. That's why I have a ghetto therapy and a career art not violence. Because okay, if your kid come into career art not violence, then a the parent could come to ghetto therapy. So it's it's two and two. So Right. That was like that was a that, that was influenced by your dad because he 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 stressed the importance of reaching the parents. Awesome, awesome. Well, you would definitely be making him proud if he were here today. He would definitely be proud of the work that you're doing in Cleveland. That's for sure. 
because you, you're not just talking about it. You're out here, you know, feet to the pavement, doing the work. Yeah, um, not not just talking about it. Um, well, I appreciate again your time. Um, thanks for chatting with me. I'll make sure I spread the word about ghetto therapy and all the things that create art um not violence is doing. Um, and just keep up the good work. It's good stuff. I do.